Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I'm very honored to be here with our uh, members of our CODEL that we took to, uh, uh, in the interest of our national security, our economic security, and our, our values uh, uh, to India and Nepal and on the way. We were in Germany, uh, meeting at high levels there, and as well on the way back we met with NATO and the EU uh, leadership as well. But we're here this morning to talk about uh, the purpose of our trip as, as regards this holiness the Dalai Lama. Now that we're all assembled, I'm honored to be here. Our trip uh, in was bipartisan and included uh, at, at the visit to the um, Dharamsala uh, was uh, wonderful, and uh, we were uh, joined by Chairman Jim Sensenbrenner, who had been on the trip uh, eight years ago when we went, wait a minute, oh, oh 08, uh, almost nine years ago, right? to, um, to India and to visit His Holiness. So this was a return trip both to, for uh, Mr. Sensenbrenner and for me. And he spoke beautifully at the felicitation ceremony, which we will Twitter. We're going to Twitter, tweet the live stream <laughs> ceremony. We'll be on Twitter. And, uh, and then uh, we're joined with the, by the, the ranking member, the top Democrat on the Foreign Affairs Committee, Elliot Engel, uh, the chair of the Lantos Human Rights uh, Commission in the, the House of Representatives, the Bipartisan Committee, uh, Jim McGovern, who's, well, I call him the spiritual leader of our trip, uh, Congresswoman Betty McCollum, uh, who has uh, uh, been with us to Tibet and uh, uh, a, a champion for human rights, Congresswoman Judy Chu of California, uh, Joyce Beatty of Ohio, and Pramila Jayapal of Jayapal of Washington State. Uh, we were particularly delighted to have a freshman. I always bring a freshman member on a leaders trip, uh, just to see the future and the constant reinvigoration of the Congress. And in this case, uh, uh, Congresswoman Jayapal was born in India. She'll tell her story. But everyone was delighted to see the entire delegation. Particularly delighted uh, to see. Uh, Congresswoman Jayapal. So, I guess I said last week we, we went to Germany, Belgium, India, and Nepal. Our delegation discussed a large no, a, a, a number of bilateral uh, issues and regional concerns with our partners, and we were honored to be received by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The chief concern of our delegation was the brutal conduct of the Chinese government to erase the language, the culture, and the religion of the Tibetan people, the challenges and the challenges facing Tibetans in other countries. Uh, the situation in Tibet is a challenge to the conscience of the world. China weighs more heavily on any country, corporation, or personality speaks out uh, for the Tibetan people. It uses its economic status or any leverage to silence the voices of friends of Tibet. But if we do not speak out against oppression, in China and Tibet because of their economic power. We lose all moral authority to talk about human rights anywhere in the world. If me, in every meeting, we emphasize the strong bipartisan support in Congress, bipartisan in the House, bipartisan in the Senate, for the autonomy of Tibet, for preserving the religion, culture, and language of the Tibetan people, and for Tibetan populations in all nations. Our delegation provided us with the wonderful opportunity to see the aspirations of the Tibetan people firsthand, especially in the eyes of the Tibetan school children in Dharamsala. To some in China, an authentic, authentic, autonomous Tibet may be seem, seem inconceivable. The Chinese may think, we're never going to let this happen. To us, it is inevitable. We have to shorten the distance between the inconceivable to the Chinese government and the inevitable uh, to the Tibetan people. So that uh, we, with great pride, uh, were again received by His Holiness, whom we hold in great uh, esteem. With that, I'm pleased to yield to our distinguished ranking member uh, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, Mr. Engel. Thank you, Madam Leader, and I'm especially uh, grateful to you for organizing this trip and uh, taking me along with you. It was really a fascinating, uh, absolutely fascinating trip. We spent uh, two days uh, with the Dalai Lama for uh, great periods of time. Uh, we were able to uh, visit the vast uh, network of schools, all these 
beautiful children that were set up in uh, how the, uh, the Dalai Lama and his people are educating these children. And let me say that I deeply appreciate India's hosting of more than 150,000 Tibetan refugees in India since 1959, including His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who has been an inspiration for people all around the world. Um, this refugee community, through a central Tibetan authority, has really become a model for democratic self-governance, holding elections and working for the interests of its people, even in the most adverse of circumstances. We also have a situation where many of these Tibetan people are also uh, in Nepal, and uh, we urged uh, the government of Nepal to, to give these people certain rights. Unfortunately, many of them are stateless, sort of caught between two borders, and that's not something that we can uh, countenance and, and accept. Um, the United States does support the One China policy. You know, you hear a lot of talk from the Beijing government about this is an attempt to subvert the One China policy. It isn't, because there's no contradiction between the One China policy and the aspiration of a Tibetan people for genuine autonomy. Uh, the Dalai Lama said many times uh, he is pushing for autonomy. That's what he's pushing for right now, nothing more. So Tibetans should be free to practice and preserve their very distinct religious, cultural, and linguistic heritage without fear of persecution. And if you stayed with them as long as we did, you realize that it's distinct, very much distinct, from the people uh, running uh, China uh, from Beijing. Um, so there's no contradiction in its strategy. The Chinese government should fulfill its promise to the people of Tibet for genuine autonomy and resume dialogue with the representatives of the Dalai Lama at the earliest opportunity. And also, very, very importantly, the Chinese government should leave discussions of the Dalai Lama's succession, he is 82, to uh, the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people. Uh, they should not uh, impose a, a, a house puppet uh, and claim that that person is the successor to the Dalai Lama. It's a religious matter, not a state matter, and it's very clear, I think, that we spoke out and said this. Now, this is another reason, and on the Foreign Affairs Committee, particularly Democrats, uh, we have been very vocal against the President's draconian cuts to the State Department and cuts to USAID. And this is uh, another example of that. This is another reason why having a fully funded State Department and USAID is so important. Support from the American people through the Tibet Fund play an important role in helping Tibetan refugees provide for their health care, education, and economic development in India, Nepal, and Bhutan. The State Department should fill the special coordinator for Tibet position in addition to the many senior positions currently vacant. So this isn't a game. This really affects people's lives. So I just want to again say how grateful I am, the fact that the Tibetan people with the Dalai Lama really opened up their homes to us, really opened up their culture to us. We had a, a, a rally for the Dalai Lama. There were hundreds of thousands of people there uh, outside. A uh, A thousand? <laughs> To me, it seemed like 100,000. But there were lots of people outside, and we all, we all spoke. And it really was a, a wonderful thing. And they deeply appreciate the fact that the United States hasn't forgotten them, is with them, and will continue to monitor the situation very, very closely. And uh, now it's my, uh, my honor to uh, um, call on my, my colleague, uh, Rep. Jim McGovern, who's probably worked harder on this issue than anybody in Congress. Uh, thank you. And I, I want to uh, begin by thanking Leader Pelosi for including me on this trip. You know, in November of 2015, I had the privilege of accompanying her to China, along with uh, Congresswoman Betty McCollum and Joyce Beatty. Uh, we were surprised and grateful at the time that the Chinese government allowed us to travel to Tibet uh, because for years access had been routinely denied uh, to members of Congress. I had hoped that was a signal that the Chinese government would reevaluate its policy Toward His, Holiness and the uh, uh, toward His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people. Uh, but sadly, the situation in Tibet and for Tibetans trying to flee China has worsened. This trip that we just returned from was to make clear to the Chinese government that the issue of Tibet is not going away. We were honored to be received by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, President Lobsang Sanjay, and thousands and thousands of Tibetans in Dharamsala. Uh, we are grateful to the Indian government and the people of India uh, for being generous hosts uh, to the thousands of Tibetans who have fled uh, China. 
We believe His Holiness and, the, and, and Tibetans living in exile should be allowed to return home to Tibet and be able to fully practice their religion, celebrate their culture, speak their language, and have genuine autonomous status according to the middle way approach advocated by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The Chinese government needs to respect the human rights of the Tibetan people and release all Tibetan prisoners of conscience, including the 11th Panchen Lama. We firmly believe the Chinese government does not have the right uh, to name the reincarnated religious leaders of Tibet. That response, responsibility rests with His Holiness and the Tibetan people. We urge all government leaders we met with to encourage China to restart the China-Tibetan dialogue so that all relevant issues can be discussed and resolved. In Nepal, we ask the Prime Minister, the Foreign Minister, the Parliamentary Speaker, and the President to allow all eligible Tibetans in their country to be registered so they can legally seek employment, establish businesses, and travel freely. The United States should join other governments and form a group of friends that could meet regularly and publicly to discuss issues regarding Tibet. In Germany, we raised this issue with the National Security Advisor, and in Brussels, we discussed coordinated efforts with EU parliamentarians. We call upon Congress to pass the Bipartisan Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act, which requires China to provide U.S. journalists and diplomats and tourists the same right to travel freely to Tibet that Chinese officials and citizens enjoy here in America. We urge President Trump and his administration to make Tibet a priority, appoint a special coordinator for Tibetan issues, and meet with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. In Germany and India, we also met with many top business leaders. We asked them to raise the issue of Tibet and other issues of human rights in China uh, forcefully and often. You know, business ties and profits are not an excuse to say nothing. To knowingly be silent uh, in the face of, of what's going on there right now is to be complicit. Uh, we were pleased with the concern that so many of our business leaders expressed to us directly. Finally, like everyone up here, I want a positive, constructive relationship with China. I admire and respect the Chinese people, their culture, traditions, and history. China is one of the world's great powers. But the Chinese government needs to overcome its paranoia about His Holiness the Dalai Lama. It is a mystery to me why a man of peace, love, justice, and truth is viewed with such fear. He is not threatening to break up China. He only wants to go home along with other Tibetans to live their lives. And I hope that that day comes soon. Uh, and with that, I would now like to introduce my colleague uh, from Minnesota, Representative Betty McCollum. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, Madam Leader, for um, asking me to join you on this very special trip. As my colleagues have said, we, it was a tremendous honor to meet His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He's a remarkable man who's just spread compassion throughout this world. And I was very pleased to bring greetings from the Tibetan community in the Twin Cities to the Tibetan officials and the Tibetans who have been in, living in exile in India and Nepal. There's a consensus amount among de Democrats and Republicans that we must continue to support His Holiness and the Tibetan people, both in their struggle against their oppression in China and their commitment to preserving their Tibetan culture. We must speak out against the mistreatment of the Tibetan people by the Chinese government, no matter what pressure Beijing brings, as my colleagues have already said. And it couldn't have become more clearer to me than the trip that I was on in November in Tibet in interacting with the monks, with uh, the people uh, from the Tibetan area, the, the guarded uh, way in which they approached us. It was a fragile conversation that you had with people. They knew that they were being watched and watched all the time. When meeting with the refugees, the Tibetans in Nepal and in India, there was an openness, there was a relaxation, there was a embrace of who they were and not afraid to show who they are to us as Americans visiting there and trying to support them. It is with great, um, great disappointment that the Chinese government has not found a way forward to find the middle way, as the Dalai Lama has uh, spoken about, so that the Tibetan culture can once again be vibrant and be in its home in China. As my colleagues and I also focus on human rights, I did take to heart the few moments that His Holiness spoke of it, our obligation to environmental stewardship. And being in the school with the Tibetan children made me realize His Holiness's message, once again, is for all of us to live in peace, to live in harmony with one another and our planet. 
and I couldn't agree with him more. The conversations that we are having today and need to continue to have on human rights in, in Tibet is an important conversation to have. And I will firmly commit to not only have those conversations here in the United States with the people back home in Minnesota, my colleagues here in Congress, but with my colleagues who serve in governments all around the world. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, Jimmy and I sat next to each other on the play for so long, I've taken her for granted. <laughs> well, I am Congress Member Judy Chu, and I am so thankful to Leader Pelosi for inviting me on this trip, which was a very, very moving experience. I will never forget talking to the young women of the Tibetan exile community in Nepal. They said that even though their community has been there for 20 years, uh, because they have no legal status and are stateless, they cannot open a bank account. They cannot buy a car. They cannot buy a house. They cannot even open up a business in their own name. They are barred from most jobs. They are impoverished, and they are condemned to this impoverished state. But Nepal refuses to change this because of pressure from the Chinese government. And I will never forget seeing the hundreds of hundreds of children greeting us with such warmth and love in Dharmasala, India. We watched as these charming kindergartners recited and read words in the Tibetan language. But then I was stunned to learn that these children were smuggled by their parents from Tibet to Dharmasala to live there forever. These children could most likely never see their parents again, but the parents were willing to make that sacrifice so that their children would learn the Tibetan religion, language, and culture. Well, the Dalai Lama said when we were there that the issue of Tibetan autonomy is an issue of justice. Now that I've been there, I understand totally. It is a justice for a people that merely want to practice their own religion, language, and culture. America was built on the fundamental principles of freedom of religion and speech. These are our values as Americans. Let us make sure we uphold these values and that we do not let this horrible injustice continue around the world. And now I'd like to yield to my wonderful colleague from Ohio, Congress Member Joyce Beatty. Thank you, and good afternoon. I join my colleagues in thanking Leader Pelosi for this great opportunity, because it was an honor to be part of this congressional delegation an experience that allowed respectful, meaningful, albeit sometimes challenging dialogue on many universal perspectives related to human rights, freedom of religion, freedom of culture, freedom of speech, economic development, and defense. While the countries we visited were separated by thousands of miles of land and water, we were not always far apart on the need to strengthen and unite economic partnerships, focus on counterterrorism, defense, and human rights. This trip provided many historic opportunities. Leader Pelosi providing guidance and insight to leaders just 10 days before the NATO meeting with heads of state and government. Conferencing with the government of Nepal leaders just days before the country's first local election in 20 years, and even meeting with presidents, prime ministers, ambassadors, and families and children from Tibet. You've heard the story of the children that were forced to leave their home, but the good with that, they were loved in a culture of teaching them and reminding them of their Tibetan culture. And even sitting with the Dalai Lama, to hear firsthand his journey of being in exile for some 50 years, yet he was able to speak to and live with boundless compassion and not anger, and suggested to us when anger, angry, widen your perspective. 
Meeting and speaking with the Dalai Lama brought to my mind similar philosophies of Dr. Martin Luther King and Gandhi, who both advocated for nonviolence, resistance, civil disobedience, and the best way to change human conditions around the world is through peace. Lastly, let me just say, reflecting on our journey, I am confident that we left an indelible mark, letting all those we met know that we represent a government that will never back down from the difficult conversations. We will take the lead on ensuring human rights is recognized through the world. We stand with the people of Tibet. We stand with the Dalai Lama. And we will continue to advocate here and abroad. Thank you, Leader Pelosi, for your continued leadership on improving the rights of all citizens of the globe. I am proud to stand with you and the bipartisan delegation. And it is indeed my honor to yield to the freshman colleague, my friend, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Thank you so much, Representative Beatty, and thank you so much, Leader Pelosi, for including me on this very special trip. And it was special for two reasons. Number one, I've spent most of my life fighting for human rights, both in this country and around the world. And number two, I had the opportunity to return to my birth country, um, a country that I left when I was 16 years old, um, and now coming back 35 years later as a congresswoman, the first South Asian American woman in the U.S. House of Representatives, <coughs> Um, was truly a moving, moving experience beyond words. It, it is a great, a, of great pride to me that my birth country has welcomed the Tibetan people, um, has allowed for the government in exile to be set up in Dharamsala, and uh, it was, I think, probably the honor of all honors to meet and be with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, but not only to be with him, but to see the uh, aura of his presence on the Tibetan people and the degree of hope with which people still remain, even those born in India as I was born, but the hope that still remains that the Tibetan people will be able to return to Hassa, that the Dalai Lama will be able to return, and that ultimately the preservation of their religion, culture, and philosophies will permeate that people, that country, and also our world. Um, what we saw in Nepal was thousands of Tibetan refugees that are not being allowed to be registered, thousands of Tibetan refugees, therefore, that don't have the ability to get jobs, that don't have the ability to pay for their lives and raise their children, um, and really because of pressure from the Chinese government. And so we did raise in every single meeting in Nepal the need to be able to register those refugees and be able to continue to stand for human rights of the Tibetan people. What we saw in Dharamsala was children, as you've heard, and teachers, some teachers who have been there for 20 years, not only teaching the children about their ways and their culture and their religion, but also being parents. Um, to people who were, as you heard, smuggled over. One gentleman that we spoke to was smuggled over in luggage at the age of 11 to the border and brought into Dharamsala. So I'm so proud to be part of a delegation that has prioritized the human rights of people that does not see a contradiction between economic uh, freedom and security and human rights. Those two things must go together, and I think our message to the Chinese government and um, uh, to any other governments that are feeling pressure is that this is the moment to speak up, not to stand down. And as Representative McGovern said, we, will, we have a number of things we're going to continue to push for, and we look forward to doing that. So with that, let me turn it back to our leader, Nancy Pelosi, who, as the Dalai Lama said, has been one of the great friends of His Holiness, one of our great champions for human rights. Thank you, Leader Pelosi. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, to all of my colleagues uh, uh, for their dedication to American values uh, as met, uh, demonstrated in their leadership on this issue of the religion, <coughs> culture, and language of the Tibetan people. What I do want to say about our trip, though, is we were able to speak to so many people in leadership and in governments because of the caliber of people <coughs> on the trip and their standing on issues. Because all of our visits to any country are about our national security, our economic security, jobs, and about our values, uh, 
and, and our just security of our uh, integrity of our of our values. So when Mr. Uh, Sensenbrenner was there, of course, he speaks in many from the Judiciary Committee, but uh, from leadership on many issues. Mr. Uh, Engel, as ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee, spoke with authority on issues relating uh, to our international relationships and our international security. But Congressman McGovern, his, uh, in addition to his uh, human rights work, of course, is on the Rules Committee and the Agriculture Committee, so they're very interested in issues that relate it mutually in terms of agriculture. Uh, Congresswoman Betty McGovern is, Betty, excuse me, <laughs> Betty McCollum, all these, are they Irish, Scotch, I don't know. Betty McCollum is uh, uh, on appropriations on the Defense Committee as well as on the inter Interior Committee. In our country, interior means natural resources, not uh, internal security. <laughs> but uh, it, she, uh, she spoke to them about uh, uh, issues that relate to our, far, uh, our uh, mutual uh, interest in global security as well as uh, climate issues as well. And uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu's on Ways and Means, needless to say, our meetings with the business community and government <coughs> leaders, they were very curious about what's going to happen to uh, the, uh, the border tax, and uh, she spoke with authority on that and other subjects as well. Congresswoman uh, uh, Beatty is on the Foreign, uh, Financial Services Committee, and they're had issues of moral, of uh, mutual concern in terms of the Financial Services Committee and speaking from her, the standpoint of civil rights in America. So it was uh, an income inequality and economic justice and the rest. And then Congresswoman uh, Jayapal is on the, uh, ju uh, the uh, Judiciary Committee, and of course there were interests in H-1B visas and other issues that come uh, before that. Uh, that committee. So we had a full uh, uh, array of issues to discuss, and because of their heft in terms of their standing on these issues, we were able to get the attention of so many people that we could talk to then also uh, about human rights. So it was very important. We did thank Prime Minister Modi for the hospitality of the, uh, the, Ind the Indian people uh, to His Holiness Dalai Lama and the Tibetans there. So. Again, we will tweet the uh, felicitation ceremony at which our members spoke. Mr. Sensenbrenner made, it, Brenner made us all very proud with his comments, as well as we were inspired by His Holiness Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. So, Tashi Jale. Any questions on this subject? Any questions on this subject, or do we thoroughly? We do have questions on other subjects. In, in a moment. In a moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, what can you do besides speaking out? Uh, I mean, any legislation? I'm going to yield to uh, Mr. McGovern because he has been our champion on this. I mean, um, uh, we, we can, um, I, m I mentioned this uh, legislation that has been introduced, the um, Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act, which uh, basically requires China to um, give access to our journalists and our diplomats and tourists to travel freely in Tibet uh, like they enjoy here. Um, and if they don't, then we can impose that same sanction on, uh, on them. Um, you know, the, one of the challenges on, this, on the issue of Tibet is that for years, uh, Democrats and Republicans have kind of talked the talk, but we haven't walked the walk. And um, there needs to be a consequence uh, to this, uh, to the brutality. Uh, that the Tibetan people face in China. Uh, and this is, you know, a, a, a modest uh, but I think appropriate uh, action for Congress to take up. I think it would send a signal to China that we're really serious about human rights in Tibet. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and hopefully it will give China pause to maybe reevaluate what they're doing. Uh, again, as we, as we all have learned, uh, there is nothing threatening to China about His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Uh, or his desire to return home, or the desire for the Tibetans to return home. Um, this is a man of peace and love. He's not talking about breaking China up, um, uh, but, he's, but he's just talking about allowing his people to go home. And we support him in that effort. But passing this legislation, I think, is one thing we can do here in Congress. One of the other issues uh, when we were in Tibet was that we would like to have a consulate in Tibet. Uh, the, when we were there, the Tibetan uh, officials said to us, well, we want more people to come to school here, to the Tibetan University, uh, to see our culture, this and that. Well, their 
Simonization of the, of the culture, the, you know, the resettlement of Han Chinese, etc. But we said to them, people are not going to send their children to school here unless there's a, a, a U.S. consulate here, so, because you're so far from Beijing. So was, as China wants more consuls, consulates in the United States, we think in the spirit of uh, reciprocity that Mr. McGovern has advanced, that we should be able to have a consulate, and that should be a priority, a consulate in Tibet uh, as well. Any comments that you would like to make, my colleague, no, on this subject? Well, the, the thing is, is it's really important to know we, we have been on a path. And we, had, we said we were going to do certain things, welcome the Dalai Lama here. We're very proud that the speaker had a luncheon for him last year, which was very gracious and lovely of him to do, bipartisan, bicameral luncheon. <clears throat> we said we would go to Tibet. <clears throat> we went to Tibet, saw for ourselves what was happening there so tragically. We said we would visit His Holiness in Dom Salah. So we have been, I think we have, this is, we've done eight for eight, or no, seven for eight. We have to try to get the legislation. But I'm, as, as has been said, it's bipartisan and bicameral, uh, the support uh, for Tibet. And this is about our values, who we are. Uh, but again, all of our uh, travels outside start first with the protection of the American people, uh, the uh, growth of our economy as well as the uh, sharing of our values or commitment to our values. Any comments, please? Yeah, I, I'd like to just say a few words about the uh, regime in, uh, in Beijing. Um, what happened in the 1950s when the Dalai Lama fled, uh, they claimed that uh, he was uh, trying to overthrow the government, which is preposterous. And even if it wasn't preposterous then, it's certainly preposterous now, and the Dalai Lama has very clearly said that all he wants is autonomy for the people of Tibet. Um, that should be a no-brainer. And I think that when we sit down uh, with the Chinese officials at the highest level, from the president on down, uh, we ought to make it clear that Tibet is a priority, and it's certainly uh, on, our, on our list of things that we're looking, looking out for. Um, there's no reason for the Tibetan culture to be destroyed. There's no reason, as I and my colleagues have, have mentioned, uh, for literally hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands of children to be smuggled in away from their parents. Um, all the people of Tibet are looking for is autonomy, and that poses no threat to the stability of the Beijing regime. And so again, I think in the United States, we have a high-level uh, meetings. We ought to make that <coughs> known and ought to make it a priority. And what I saw with my eyes only reaffirmed all the things I've read all these many years. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll just report the point the Chinese government, including when we did meet with the president uh, of China when he was here last time, well, not last time, we weren't at Mar-a-Lago, but when he was here at the Capitol last time, uh, he said, you know, we, Senator Feinstein, I made, made the point, she's been a real champion on this issue about how the, what's happening in Tibet. He said, well, go see for yourself. And I said, fine, give us a visa, because for 25 years I've been trying to get a visa to get in Tibet. Tibet is a harder place for reporters to get into than, I believe, North Korea is. It's, it, they really keep it blocked. But in any event, thank you uh, for your question. <clears throat>